intense, and we are straight into game number two. Ladies and gentlemen, first band will be the funny. The Samsung Galaxy A series draft, ladies and gentlemen, with a fanny ban again. Fanny is the most hated hero, I guess, in the MPL. I We're seeing the fanny ban every team single team game. Banned. Valentina coming, you know, very close to that. Close. But fanny has been literally banned every game. Yeah, indeed. Why? 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 Well, Why? because in this MPL ID, in this competition, yes. The junglers know how broken Fanny is, and they can't exploit that fact, Mirko. Yeah, even in ranked. Even every in time ranked. my teammates don't ban Fanny, I get so mad. I get so mad. I hate this hero with a passion. I as, can confirm. As a jungler who cannot play Fanny, I hate Fanny players. <laughs> Learn Fanny, Mirko. I guess no. you, need you need to adapt, Mirko. You need to adapt with the. That's why they meta. created the ban bun. I don't need to adapt. I can just ban Fanny, just like the players here on stage are banning Fanny. So technically. They I have the same mindset, mean the well, I mean, they have wearing. also improved, adapted, and overcame. Mirko. That is something you have not been doing. So one, one only, one, one only. You know, Jack has all traits, master of one. That is Mirko. And now with the Julian actually banned out. So far, it's been pretty standard. But I wonder, will there be any respect bans towards the roamers, right? Because again, with the with the roamer role being so critical, so important in this team matchup. I think they have, they're forced to try and respect some of that, maybe picking it first, or maybe at least banning some options out. Perfect timing, Arashi. Well, now that we're talking about the roamers, Ghani, you're a Romain, yep. Kufra only, <laughs> but you know, Kufra you have a lot of information about all the other roamers. Now, did you like that Atlas pick from Bigatron? I gotta say, because knowing Bigatron, Bigatron's identity, yeah, the Atlas pick makes sense. And it's combined with real world manipulation, I mean, it just ma makes much more even sense here. But yeah, let's stay focus on the drafts here. Sense just off the roof. <laughs> off the roof. So much sense there so in the first the game. But <laughs> that Gani sense. Gani sense, Gani ladies sense. and gentlemen. But Rebellion, Ooh, they're going to have to go and wrap up banning. their drafts with, this, with the same ban towards the Franco. Bigatron Alpha, well, final ban. Arashi, do they want to pick off a... They have to ban the Feramis. They have to ban the Feramis. Right now, it's left open. Mm -hmm. If they don't ban it, Valentino was banned out by Bigatron, so they don't have a response here. But guess what? Val, he has a comment. He has a comment, ladies Ooh. and gentlemen. He is tired of being called a clown, all right? He is a bull, not a clown. Exactly. It sounds cooler because it kind of rhymes, kind of makes sense in Indonesian, but that's the spirit, man. He does, he's, he's done being overlooked by people. He got a is glow up here. Look at his hair. Ex exactly. He is here he now? to represent. So now, Your the last team band will be the Faramis, and this opens up a lot <laughs> wow. of potential for to Rebellion Zion, man. Is to trick the well, we have to see here. Rebellion Zion, last time around, they opted for their Masha. Will it be the same? I mean, realizing, looking from game number one, Dyron has is so deadly on that Masha. So perhaps we'll have the same approach here okay. for game number two. Again, we gotta. I got to reiterate, right? Rebellion, their draft was solid. I actually preferred Rebellion's draft when you compare it to Bigatron Alpha, but the execution, BTR played it so slow, they refused to take any fights, and it just, the, the frustration built or, uh, on the heads, mm. in the heads of Rebellion Zion. And because of that, they were the ones who were forced to make desperate plays. They picked up the 1-1 one, one, though, so the 1-1 one, one that was banned in the first game is now picked up by Rebellion Zion. We've seen 1-1 one, one twice by Chadera. 50% win rate. Highs, who's still playing, not Jisa. How is he going to perform on the 1-1? One, one? We'll have to wait and see here, what, don't you think, Arashi? Starlist is now brewing Beatrix. something. Breatrix and perhaps, will they go for a Masha? You can go for the Yeev again as well because... Tamas, they can go for Tamas, honestly. They can go for Tamas as well. So it depends on what they want to emphasize, right? If they want to mid control, they need to get some wave clear. Uh, Yeev will be really beneficial there. Uh, if they want to try and go for some jungle dominance, some aggression, getting the roam and the jungle right now will be a good option as well. Preferably someone you can flex towards the no, HP lane, yeah, keep things, you know, see. shake things up a bit. It oh, will be the Akai right. and the, also You're the Cecilia. Oh, no. Whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. They said, okay, y'all can't do it right. Yeah. It's our turn. Yeah, this is basically what they're saying. You picked the Akai, you picked the Sicilian in the first game, you didn't win. So let me just tell you how to do it. That's Pikachu Alpha style. Let me show you. Style. Yeah. Show. They show. I, yeah, sure, they, that might be the approach, but I am seriously doubting this is the, the Sicilian, Sicilian in the first phase. We'll have to wait and see here. Rebellion, they can go immediately for the counter here, such as perhaps Yves is still open. A lot of heroes that can somehow just take Sicilian out of the game rather quickly. We'll have to see here what will respond with 
What will they respond with? Rebellion. They can go for Dimasha once again. And oh, Lily. I don't know. I like Lily. Oh, Lily. Oh, Masha is still up for grabs. They pick it up. And the Yeeve as well. Remember, in game number two, the Yeev was able to completely bully the Sicilian in lane, getting so much of that wave pressure into him, even the kill pressure. I, I agree with you, Garni. I feel like the Sicilian right now is just, it's just not it, fam. It's not it. A lot of heroes. If Pikachu wants to make good use of the Sicilian, they must they must aid it somehow, right? Like, send another hero to try and help him out in the lane, maybe? But that also takes away from the other lanes. And knowing now that Rebellion has a very strong mid lane presence, and they have that Masha that can be in the roaming, uh, roaming role, it can be in the AXP role, wherever it is, it's gonna be, uh, Masha's gonna be very strong 1v1. And I'm not sure if Bigatron has the leeway of sending another another hero time towards that middle lane. Wait for no man. Your team mm. is gonna be, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the Beatrix as well. So, predicted. Yeah, mm. I mean, he, Matt was the MVP for game number one on that Beatrix, so he is trying to replicate the same success here, you know, entering the second phase. This is where things get interesting here. Jungler, for side of Rebellion, has yet to be picked, and as well as Romer. And I think that, you know, I've said this multiple times, but the Beatrix actually counters the 1-1 one -one in a way, right? If you get to level 4 and you get that Renner and Wesker combination, there is no way for the 1-1 one -one to actually play. 1-1 one -one comes close to get those weakness points, Beatrix is always there with the Wesker. But if 1-1 one -one plays it safe under the turret, that's a Renner shot for you, followed up by anyone else. That's 1-1, one -one gone. But we're entering the second phase of the draft. Atlas is going to be banned out with a Fovius as well by Rebellion. They might be setting up for something else here. Sure, it is the natural counter towards 1-1. One -one. Dash heavy hero countered by the Fovius. But I think they're setting up for something else. Oh, Perhaps a Lancelot or a Benedetta. We've seen how like some teams, they have no issue like playing a 1-1 one -one into a Povius, right? Last season, at least. We, I think, I forgot which game exactly, but we saw that the Povius, it can't deal with the amount of damage that the 1-1 one -one can dish out. So, uh, I'm not sure if that's meant to, like, uh, if, if Rebellion is meant to just ban out a counter to 1-1. One -one, that might be the case. But, but, but for Benedetta, banned Yo. out by Bigachon right now. So, that is a hero we have not seen just yet. That is an interesting one, though. We've, 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 uh, we have ourselves met it in ranked building tank Mirko, and that's pretty annoying to deal with. Mm. The Benedetta? Yeah. The Benedetta in ranked. I mean, we saw it in MSC too, because Albert brought yeah. it out. The tank exactly. Benedetta, it was a problem for RSGPH in the upper bracket finals, but they read it when out. They know how to play against it in second. the grand finals. Yes. And there you go. As we say it, BTR batting out that Benedetta. We're also seeing BTR mm. with the first pick, first phase. We got a lot of dirt here from BTR on Rebellion Zion. Let's see what they go for. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's going to be a Kai in the jungle. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I honestly, mean, they need a backline diver here. Someone. I mean, Matilda they could is. They actually go for, for an Estes. Estes, yeah, I'm looking for supports, Matilda here. But then again, if they really want to go crazy, if they want to go aggressive, I just like their you. identity, but no. Your team is Lolita. picking. Lolita. Is that meant to just block off one the damage? One, 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 one right. attack, first ability, even the basic attacks here. Yeah, just to try to stop this 1-1 one, one from being a threat. But the thing is, Rebellion Zion, they can actually just counter this by going for that a, a more aggressive tank. If they go for an Atlas, I don't think the Lolita can really answer. That's why it's banned out. It was banned out, but the thing is now, Kufra could be the answer too. True. Kufra. Mm, thinking about other heroes. I'm thinking yeah, about I, I'm, I'm wondering if Bigatron's plan is just to like use their front lines, right? Akai and Lolita, make sure it's a front to back, and when it's a front to back, Cecilion, oh. eventually the damage builds up, right? So I, I'm wondering if that's the plan because I think Rebellion, they won't just let that happen. Oh. As you say that, they pick up the Esmeralda and they pick up the Hayabusa as well. So a lot of dive and a lot of long range damage as well. So it's quite balanced, but definitely more aggressive on the side of Rebellion Zion. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, this Esmeralda pick makes sense, right? Because Lolita, he is going to create shields, and Esmeralda will just absorb that shield mm -hmm. on, free, and free, on free will. And yeah, Masha Romo will be the answer here for the side of Rebellion, as Bigatron will opt for a Uranus last pick. Hmm. Now, gotta be honest with you, 
I don't see the synergy from the composition from the side of Bigatron here. Do they want to go for a pick off? Do they want to go for a team fight? I got to be honest with you. I agree. I agree. BTR, the Lolita is supposed to just, you know, you, you want to go for a full engage. But if you have the Akai with a heavy spin, it actually just creates so much chaos. Lolita won't really be able to follow up on any of the crazy... You, you can't get a lot of people in ultimate, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. You can pin some members down, you can go for the pick, but then what's the Lolita for? Right, so I, I don't know. I think it makes sense in the sense that you can threaten the dive away using Lolita's ultimate, right? The Nominant Blast. Or you can also use the Akai to just push people away from the Sicilian, from the Beatrix. So in a sense, it, it makes sense. They have, they have protection from divers and they have a solid front line in the Uranus. It, it can work, but it's very much reliant on Rebellion letting them just sit back and relax. And Rebellion, we've seen them in game number one. They won't let that happen. They will find all the ways. If they can't get to you from the front, they'll go from the sides. They'll use the objectives and use it to draw you in. So this is very idealistic, I might say, from the side of Bigatron. It may work out, but it's very unlikely in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like their philosophy has been fight, fight, fight. We'll have to see here in game number two. Will they be able to translate that or not? Meanwhile, for Side of Rebellion, their composition is, is solid. 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 Now, what I do, what my concern for Side of Rebellion is, can they close a game out? Because yeah, it has been their team, their theme from season nine. Well, I think with this composition, they've got their comfort heroes in. The signature picks, ladies and gentlemen, Yeev, Sway Low. Sway Low, last season on the Yeev, always banned out. Now it's left open, but ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump straight in. What's going on? Whoa, whoa. Wait, what? First blood already. That was a dive here. Val was able to trade it out in the end with Sway Low taking the kills, but it's a two for one in the early stage. We're jumping in mid mid game. They happened so fast, man. It's, it's, a, it's one for two. But it's oh, trash from game one. Exactly, it just came out of nowhere. We're still quite taken aback here. Even the <laughs> Max hasn't even cleared his first two buffs yet. So what was that? I need to take a breather, but now I can see here already Fearless Ooh. with that retribution is not able to steal that purple buff away. Still the Kai gets that one. But in 20 seconds here, first shuttle will go up as Val here, of course, already aggressive. Gameplay with this Masha. Yeah, we talked about how the Sicilian needs some help, and he is just babysitting the mid lane. So we'll see if that play, you know, that plays out. On the top side, though, Matt is happy to just duel it out against Ice. Mirko knows his method quite well. It's about whether he can land the snipe or not. And Matt, we've seen his accuracy. It's pretty good. It's pretty nice. good when he's not targeted by a Masha, right? But here, Bigatron Alpha looking for the turtle once again. It's going to be the falling side. We're locking two members in place as Fearless jumps in with the quad shadow, but it's going to be Max with the retribution securing the turtle. Dyron taking low, taken down as BTR get a kill and a turtle. BTR going wild. Man, Absolutely. the timing, the timing there from that Lolita, the ultimate, just connects on towards Dyron. He goes down, and that provides a lot of space for Uranus to clear bot side. And take a look at top side as well. Beatrix, Matt, is farming like crazy in the first three minutes. I mean, like crazy taking the extra gold from oh. the shield as well. He's going to get full value out of there, and he won't be punished for it. Bigatron having a lot of uh, advantages in the early game here. I'm still impressed Moreno made it out, man. He was caught there. He got hit, connected by the Falling Star Moon. He ran towards the enemy team and looped around. So very calm gameplay coming in from him. It's, it's a great sign. It is. It is a great sign. It seems like now, Val, both roamers going at it. No commitments just yet. Trying to protect the gold la respective gold laners here in Matt and as well as highs. Now, seeing highs at a 0-1-0, zero, one, zero, Mm -hmm. Is this a good start for 1-1? Well, oh, definitely not, man. Mirko would know that like 1-1 requires a good laning phase to just like, you know, pop off out of control. We'll have to see though, he has a lot of work to do in the late game team fights. although Bigatron has a counter ready for him, so he needs to be a bit more creative in how he wants to do it. As Sorizo, man, wow. he just starts cutting him two waves in the base, and there's no answer just yet, but we do see that Swaylo tries to try and stop that, but I don't think he can. I don't think so. I don't think Swaylo alone can really take this Uranus on. Meanwhile, top side, oh, Sangling uh -oh. Claws actually connecting onto highs there. He providing the support with the shield up. That just removes the pressure that the crossbow of Tang has, because the weakness points will not, will not be taken out, will not be 
collected. It's not. You're just gonna collect a turret with the Wesker. This is exactly what you want to do when you have a Beatrix on your team. Enable that Beatrix to play, but look at this. Oh. Eyes gonna go all the way oh. under it. Wow. He gets it in the end, but Matt and Key perfectly timing and perfectly maneuvering to get that Wesker shot on high. Oh, the outplay there. A little too aggressive. He overcommitted on that play, and he has to pay the price. Turtle now. Second one will fall once again to the side of Bigatron Alpha, and this is not a good start for side of Rebellion Zion. Take a look at the gold gap. 4K already in the first five minutes, Arashi. Everything Not a good sign. Is, everything is going according to plan for Vigatron, man. They send Sorizo to pull in pressure from the members of Rebellion Zion. They take full control on the top side, make the play, make the outplay as well, take the turret, and was able to be there for the next turtle just like that. So everything is going on uh, right on schedule, and that is scary, man. Looking at the items now, Sorizo can have a lot of leeway with his spells. He has the Enchanted Talisman, so the cooldown gameplay is what he's aiming for. Yeah, take a look at the items here already. Beatrix building aggressively into BOD plus uh, that penetration extra that item. And yeah, Lolita providing utility with that dominance eyes on uh, the way. Take a look at the side of the riverside here. Max trying to open up the map, trying to target Suelo, but Val will definitely not let that happen as it is a uh, scattered. Men are scattered, but top side will the main Ooh. Main, main, May, will be the main focus here for the side of Rebellion Zion. Fight here breaks out in the mid side, but Tuelo off camera gets taken down. Uh oh, Max still taking a whole lot of damage. Heise can't just go in here. He doesn't have the crossbow tank yet, but he will find it on to Cerizo. He doesn't pop it just yet. A Cerizo just so dire away. He jumps in under the oh. turret to go for the kill, but this might be a little too aggressive. The consecration popped defensively. He, but for the Duminon Blast, will not flicker into it. He just uses it as a zoning tool. It's big Tron Alpha. Push with the lead. They get the turret. Ooh. They get the shot on Fearless. And it's a 5,000 gold lead in the sixth minute of the game. Yeah. It's slow, but it's suffocating. Efficient. Bigatron, they're suffocating Rebellion Zion right now. It's The mid turret has fallen. It's fall. It's fall Lin. And now it's outside as well. And now it seems like turret, yeah, objectives favors Bigatron Alpha. Absolutely, man. They're playing it very, very strict in the early game, making sure that there's no chance at all for Rebellion Zion to come mount any kind of resistance. And we talked about the Sicilian needing, gonna be lackluster, needing help. That well, if you can't win the lane, let's de you know destroy the laning phase whatsoever, right? They just go for the roams and they're grouping up at five minutes, so they're not even letting the side of Rebellion Zion to get any advantage in the laning phase between Suelo and Moreno. Hmm, interesting, interesting there. Now, ooh, with that shadow kill, Fearless is aiming for a fast clear in the mid side. Meanwhile, Bigatron with the concealed play, Jiren forced to cancel out that recall, and yeah, bot side turret now will fall. Rebellion Zion lost another structure here in this land of dawn. 90 seconds at the first floor, but take a look at top side. Highs with this 1-1, one, one. pops that crossbow attack, a 2v1. Oh, oh, what? Sorizo with the stacks on the Uranus, he gets one kill off the oh. one one. You can hear it. I mean, I don't know if the if the people at home can hear it, but Bigatron, my Blue goodness, the fans destroyed. and the players just going ham as Cerezo. 1v2's highs and bow. That, that definitely hit Rebellion in the head. That was a mental blow. 1v2, 8,000 goal lead. BTR are just going with it now. TP down the mid lane turret with the help of Max. Divina Blast when he pops here, connecting onto Dyrant. Max goes in, using oh. the heavy spin to bring Dyrant back. Val taken low, almost taken down here. He's asking the real world population to provide the safety out to the other members. But man, the disrespect from BTR. They're showing class and dominance in this game, but there's already some trades on the map. That is Fearless picking up a turret down below. Key. Ooh, doesn't Ooh. find Fearless. Just so close. Almost. Speaking of close, Player head to head by head and shoulders, Arashi. Yep, it's very, very much close, man. I think it depends really much on how the team plays to actually see the small differences, right? Like 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1 difference with uh, ki uh, kills per game and average KDA isn't really that big of a deal, you know? I think what's important is that you do your job doing damage, uh, and that will very much rely on the team. Right, because if your team can't protect you, then you're just gonna get taken out and your damage just drops down. So right now, Bigatron, if, if you're on max, if you're on max right now, Bigatron is doing so well and you're gonna have a lot of damage over Fearless. Because Fearless is, he is in a very tough spot right now. 
He is in a tough spot now. Abigatron, they are still in control. They have the map control here as take a look at Uranus. He is ready for the flank. And Bigatron, they might commit to this lore here as Uranus can just distract the opponents as of right now. It seems like Valdo still in that vicinity trying also to give information on regarding the health of the Lord. Well, it will be taken out without a fight though. So you see, Bigatron wow. is doing exactly what Rebellion was doing towards them. Pull people away with a tanky dominant offlaner and go for the objective. So they are absolutely shoving it in the face of Rebellion. This is what you should have been doing, man. We can do it better. Oh my god, Bigatron Alpha again with the setup there. Heiz was actually... Uh, he was a, in a 1v2 again, this time with Dairon on Cerezo, and he still, he lost. He was very close to dying there with Cerezo having the blade armor, Rebellion Zion. It, it's going to be really tough to melt this man down. Look at his items, Arashi. Dominance, ice, and blade armor secured. This, this is a scary arena. He's gonna probably go for the Oracle as well, so that, that will be where he'll be truly unstoppable. And the 10k gold beat, man, there's a play coming in from the Head Rebellion. It might work out. Oh my god, Moreno's still able to run away for a little bit until Matt comes in to follow it up. Val, running away, one for one right now. Tyrant taken down. Bigatron trying to look for the siege in the top side. No Sicilian, but Cerezo is oh. jumping in. Ice gets caught, and he will fall. What a brilliant pickoff there by Bigatron Alpha as Matt goes into the viewer's passion. Also, Val just melting him down with that damage. Matt, again, on the back of his team, is able to just dish out the damage and take the game in a very, very dominant fashion. 2-0 for BTR.